Hello everyone. So, today we are going to start the topic tactile aspects of clothing comfort. In earlier topics we had we have discussed we have discussed about the psychological aspects of clothing comfort or overall it is a psychological aspects of comfort and then we have discussed the neurophysiological aspects. There we discussed about various uh, measurement technique, psychophysical, psychophysics, laws of psychophysics. Then uh, in neurophysiological aspects we have discussed the uh, various uh, sensors available in our uh, skin, uh, mechanical sensors, thermal sensors present in our uh, skin. Now, in this segment of tactile aspects of clothing, what we are going to discuss here that what are the different factors of clothing or maybe cloth, fabric or yarn which actually activates the sensor and ultimately we get some feeling. So, from here onwards we will discuss about the textile aspects of clothing comfort. So, here now tactile aspects of clothing comfort means tax tactile comfort sensation. So, what is that? So, tactile comfort of clothing it is based on human sensory response to clothing material like design of clothing, the type of material we use. So, how this, uh, this uh, textile material actually actuates our sensory uh, responses. So, it is sensed by variety of stimuli. So, our clothing sends some different type of stimuli that may be thermal, may be physiological or may be mechanical when actually we were clothing and ultimately it gives overall tactile response. So, if we see overall tactile response now uh, the thermal aspects we will discuss somewhere in next uh, um, uh, segment. Here we will uh, discuss the mechanical aspects of tactile uh, comfort. So, if we divide the tactile response broadly we can divide in two types which actually clothing sends to our body. First is prickleness, scratchiness, rubbing, uh, this type of or itching, this type of sensation we get. So, that gives some uncomfortable feeling and we will discuss uh, various aspects of prickleness, scratchiness, what are the uh, different factors which actually controls the prickliness, scratchiness. If we understand this, then we can develop fabric of comfortable in nature. And next aspect is that it is a fabric handle related characteristics, which is actually sense of touch or pressure. So, in earlier segment as we have discussed that in neurophysiological sensation, which we receive by our different types of sensors the touch, pressure, this type, but effectively this sensation is received by the fabric mechanical characteristics. So, here we will discuss the what are the mechanical characteristics, how can you evaluate this mechanical characteristics, what are the factors affecting this mechanical characteristics. So, handle related characteristics which is basically sense of touch. 
So, how do we perceive the tactile comfort? Basically, clothing due to its different mechanical characteristics like bending rigidity, its uh, extensibility, its uh, surface characteristics, friction. So, this all these characteristics actually stimulates our sensory that is uh, sensors which are present in the skin. So, when this fabrics are in contact with our skin, it gives signal to the skin. So, our skin receives signal from this fabric. Suppose, the fabric is rigid, it will get it will get certain that is our sensors get certain type of sensation. If it is rough, it will get different sensation. If it is flexible, it will get different sensation. So, this mecha uh, mechanical stimulation the or uh, different types of frictional force, it gives signal to our skin. Then the those sensors present in the skin as we have discussed, it sends signal to our brain, brain evaluates and ultimately we perceive certain comfort feeling. So, so which fabric gives better best uh, actually maximum sensation? The tactile sensation it is important for those fabrics which are in contact with our body. Although other fabrics which are not in contact with our body, those fabrics send indirect sensation. Suppose, over a very soft fabric, if we wear a very stiff fabric that will give indirect sensation, but mainly we should be very careful about the those fabrics which come in to contact with our skin. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, very important. Now, let us see the tactile sensing mechanism. The sensory field of clothing material is dependent on the mechanical stimuli due to pressure frictional force. So, pressure and frictional force which actually send signal to our skin. Okay. When it comes into contact with our body and it stimulates the this uh, they stimulate the various uh, mechanical receptors. So, when the clothing material comes into contact with uh, our body the our skin they stimulate various mechanical receptors. The, uh, this receptors as we have discussed they may be free nerve ending okay, uh, root hair plexures. Merkle disc and all these the mechanical receptors, and they are present at different layers of our skin that we have discussed its epidermis, dermis, and subcutaneous zones. So, they receive the signals of mainly pressure and friction from the fabric, and we get sensations. So, most tactile sensitive parts are basically there are three parts of our body the, those are most sensitive parts. One is the face is a most sensitive part okay? because if, as we know that when we uh, use any textile material for face wash or face uh, some uh, uh, say wipe or something we need extremely soft one because that uh, face is uh, very sensitive to tactile sensation. Next comes the torso, the main uh, actually central part of our body, uh, which extend uh, neck to limb, because that is uh, very important. Here we get maximum tactile response, because area of the torso is very high. So, most of the part is uh, very sensitive. So, we should be very careful of uh, using clothing for this type of work. 
uh, area okay because we get maximum prickle sensation maximum itchy sens itching sensation maximum scratchy type sensation in this part okay and third one is the hand so these parts are very sensitive and we should be very careful of uh, selecting fabrics for this type of jewels okay the tactile characteristics of textile materials are basically typically these are flexibility of material whether the fabric is uh, flexible or stiff that gives sense tactile sensation whether a fabric is soft or hard then it is whether it is a compressible or not whether it is a rough surface texture it is a rough texture or it is a smooth that we get whether the fabric is extensible or not if it is extensible it will give less pressure on our body ok. So, that uh, gives a direct tactile uh, sensation of our body frictional characteristics whether there is a it is a it is a it gives a rough sensation or not. So, this uh, are the basic fabric related characteristics we will see how to measure all these characteristics to know what type of tactile sensation it will give ok. So, among all these if we see although it may not be that much important, but we broadly if we see tactile characteristics we first measure the widely we try to measure it is a softness by pressing by thumb or finger ok. So, that it is a very widely used most frequently used tactile characteristics of clothing is surface bulk. So, it is a initial tactile per perception if the fabric is not soft then we actually whatever may be the other characteristics we normally say it is not tactile uh, soft ok comfortable, but there are other characteristics which are very important. So, how do we perceive softness first is by squeezing with the help of fingers ok. So, the objective evaluation of softness or fullness can be done by compressibility. So, we can by hand we can squeeze it, but if we want to measure if we want to compare the uh, actual value. So, we can measure the compressibility or compressional resilience. So, that that uh, we can measure we will see how to measure ok. So, this can be done by compressibility and resiliency characteristics. So, if we see the all those tactile characteristics we can measure by measuring the low stress mechanical characteristics. So, what are those low stress mechanical characteristics? These are bending. So, it is low stress mechanical characteristics is important for our clothing for tactile uh, characteristics there are two types of mechanical characteristics one is high stress mechanical characteristics where we actually test the fabric up to its uh, its uh, end point its a uh, uh, when up to uh, its a uh, breakage point ok maximum point, but here in low stress mechanical characteristics we use very low stress to deform the fabric. So, like bending bending we use the low stress very low amount of test uh, bending stress which actually uh, is uh, uh, fabric encounter during work state. Next is shear, shear is uh, nothing but it is a uh, it is a deformation when the force is applied in in uh, parallel in opposite direction. So, that is a shear the fabric with low shear stress will give better tactile uh, comfort. So, fabric should have very high shear strain with low stress. The very classical example is that if we were if we uh, make uh, prepare a clothing from a material which is other than textile material like polythene sheet we can incorporate any other characteristics a polythene sheet if we want it is a want a permeability in a polythene sheet we can punch the holes. 
if we want softness we can make a uh, very soft very flexible or very soft one we can make very good surface texture but in a polythene sheet or any any planar material we cannot uh, incorporate shear we cannot reduce shear stress to a greater extent because it's a it's characteristic it's a continuous material but for textile material its a uniqueness is that due to its interlacement the threads the yarns can move freely so that's how the shear is characteristics is extremely important which helps a clothing to actually accommodate our body posture if we move our body if we change our body posture the clothing automatically takes shape with with a very low shear stress but if the shear stress is very high so then it will unnecessary impart pressure on our skin and ultimately we get uncomfortable sensation okay next is the extensibility the extensibility is extremely important because if the uh, low stress extensibility means if the fabric is made of very highly rigid structure fabric is very high so then uh, due to movement of our body it may restrict our body movement okay so at at least at low stress the extensibility should be little bit high okay similarly compressional characteristics it should be soft enough then surface toughness which is very important which gives the indication of scratchiness okay if the surface is rough it will give uh, it will generate high friction and we will feel uh, will feel uncomfortable so we have to measure this uh, low stress mechanical characteristics so there are various uh, methods evolved but two successful commercial instruments are a set of instrument i should say uh, available one is kawata evaluation system for fabric kesf system another is the fabric analysis by simple test fast okay although fast is not actually developed for uh, measuring the tactile characteristics but indirectly we can get the tactile characteristics of it. we will discuss each and every characteristic methods okay in detail now the tactile characteristics and tactile response so fabric tactile characteristics it is these are actually directly related to the the what are the responses we will receive okay so as far as the tactile responses of our body is concerned these are all low stress mechanical characteristics of fabric which are directly or indirectly stimulate the touch pressure roughness and other mechanical receptors of our body so this if we understand our fabric low stress mechanical characteristics we can we can indirectly we can directly guess what type of actual response we will get tactile response we will get so basically fabric tactile characteristics is directly related with the human tactile response so if a fabric is uh, friction is uh, high frictional uh, coefficient is high then it will definitely give a roughness characteristic rough feel. it will definitely actually try to pull the skin along with the fabric movement so give different sensation so we'll start with uh, characteristics which is it's a prickliness which actually we can we cannot measure it's not directly low stress mechanical characteristics low stress mechanical characteristics we can say we can uh, call it as as handle characteristics touch pressure and all this but prickliness is entirely different which which is not uh, basically it doesn't come under the low stress mechanical characteristics okay it's not even friction or nothing so frickliness is basically which is uh, which gives maximum uncomfortable nature if the fabric is prickly okay 
So, prickliness sensation is one of the most irritating discomfort sensation of for clothing which we actually wear next to our skin. So, even if we can we can bear a discomfort a sensation of a stiff fabric or maybe a fabric give little bit higher pressure, but if fabric uh, is uh, it uh, gives a prickle sensation then we will feel tactile we will feel very uncomfortable. And that we uh, in uh, last segment we have discussed the prickle sensation we get uh, with the uh, by uh, some noci receptor. Okay. So, that uh, so it is sensed by a special type of pain nerves that we have discussed which are present actually close to the skin surface in mainly in epidermis. Okay. Okay. So, that is uh, and uh, when a fabric uh, in uh, contacts the skin individual protruding fiber actually a, a group of protruding fiber act excites the uh, pain uh, nerve endings okay and uh, the, it's not uh, it's a single fiber that we have discussed it should be a group of fiber and it should actually act on a minimum area that we have discussed okay in last one. so fiber ends the perception of prickle sensation then that for that we required combined response from group pain of nerves okay pain nerves okay group of nerves so it's not the single nerve it's a group of nerves if if get say give signal then we will get prickle sensation okay and that is actually that is given by a large number of hairs okay covered with a certain minimum area of your so now, how do we assess the prickle sensation? So, to assess the prickliness of fabric, so we have to assess the protruding fiber, number of protruding fiber. Uh, we know that we need a number, we a certain number of protruding fibers, but how do we assess these things? So, it can be measured by measuring the hairiness of yarn used to produce a fabric and by measuring the surface hairiness of fabric. If we have measuring technique to measure the surface hairiness of, hairiness of fabric, then we can directly measure, okay. but this type of instrument are uh, normally not available to all the industries, most of the industries. For them, they can actually get the hairiness value measured for a particular fabric and then get certain idea about the prickliness sensation. So, although measurement of hairiness is uh, not the uh, hairiness of yarn is not the only criteria, we have to see the length of the hair, we have to see the diameter of the fiber. So, all this concept all this information along with the hairiness value will give indication of uh, uh, of a material of a fabric which will be uh, which uh, will be a prickliness will have prickliness or not okay so first we will discuss the uh, different standard methods of uh, measurement of yarn hairiness here we will discuss three standard methods of measurement okay yarn hairiness is in most circumstances these are undesirable properties of of any material okay so, but in why in most circumstances, circumstances in some of the application we need here is that uh, some special special effect we may uh, like uh, some hairy effect we may like or maybe some brushing effect uh, we may try to incorporate to get more warmth, but in most of the uh, cases it is a undesirable property as far as the uh, appearance of fabric is concerned. Also, it gives indication of the problem of fabric prickliness. So, we must uh, know how to measure the fabric uh, yarn hairiness. So, measurement of yarn hairiness actually it depends on the method type of method chosen. So, you may we may some uh, uh, one method it may give a number of hairs, number of uh, another method may give a total length of hairs projected. So, depends on the type of measurement. So, we will start with the method which is 
actually it uh, and and it is not possible to normally give a single parameter. Single parameter means it is a if we try to measure the length, length of uh, uh, sorry number of uh, hairs per unit length that means that we should know the what is the length of the hair. So, that uh, combination is required and also that another uh, method which gives the total length of hairs protruding above the hairy uh, yarn uh, surface, but this total length sometimes gives wrong impression about the prickliness. If uh, the uh, so should we go for higher hairiness if it may be a single fiber end single fiber end of a long hair that gives the total length of hair so one hair of say 10 millimeter that gives a one hair length another 10 hairs of 1 millimeter length. So, ultimately it gives the same value. So, 10 millimeter of hair, but if you see the prickliness sensation these two yarns will give different sensation, but at least we get some idea about the hairiness. Okay. So, a yarn may have small number or long hairs or large number of short hairs or any combination. So, this or of any combination. So, this techniques will give us fair idea about the hairs. The problem is that then which combination should be actually given a higher hairiness rating. So, higher hairiness rating is uh, it is a um, relative term for uh, prickliness sensation we may consider it is a lower hairiness sensation, but here the length of hair is very important we must know the length of hair. So, first we will uh, we'll discuss the yarn hairiness measurement by Sarli yarn hairiness tester. Okay. So, in this uh, method the it is a counter is there it counts the number of hairs longer than specified length. So, that specified length is normally it is a 3 millimeter 3 above 3 millimeter of length that is above the yarn surface whichever uh, hairs projected above the yarn surface whichever more than 3 millimeter it will count as one yarn. Okay. And we can also measure we can pre select the length uh, up to 10 millimeter 1, 2, 3 like 10 millimeter length we can pre select and count the number of hairs. Okay. And it consists of a beam of light okay, light okay, which is which is actually projected through a small actual diameter of diameter to the ultimately it is to going to the photo receptor. Okay. And in between the light source and photo receptor the yarn will be passing and as a single hair is passing through in between this, this will actually interrupt the light sensation. So, yarn under test is run between light and photo receptor and as the hair pass between the light and the receptor the light beam momentarily broken okay, and an electric uh, electronic circuit counts the number how many time it has that it is a broken the uh, light signal is broken. So, what it does there is an aperture there is an aperture and uh, between that through that aperture when the hair is moving that will be counted okay. and uh, it is only and hair is actually present the, the hairs are present throughout the surface evenly and it is assumed that the total hairs are proportional to the the number of hairs at the at that particular surface okay, at the top surface. So, if it is um, light is uh, um, projected through the top of the yarn surface. So, we cannot actually measure the total number of hairs but it is assumed that it is a proportional okay. like here in this instrument you can see the yarn it has got two types of slots. Okay. This, is, this is the fixed yarn path 
which is actually 3 millimeter and this is the aperture. This one is aperture and through which light uh, signal is passing and this is the yarn, hairy yarn and it is moving, it will move through this uh, fixed path and as soon as one hair is moving through this, it will count as a single hair. But we can see that it is not a, it cannot measure the hair in this side, opposite side or other side. Okay. Only the hairs which is which are actually passing through this aperture, this will be counted and it is assumed that hairs are evenly distributed. Okay. And this slot is another slot is alternative slot which is actually which we can change, we can change the path distance. This is the variable distance which can be from say 1 millimeter to 10 millimeter depending on this guide. This is the variable, variable guide, this can be lifted upward and downward and depending on that we can it will measure, it will count and this is the counter and let us see the uh, animation, okay. animation of for the first it is a for the fixed path. Now, it is a moving uh, yarn is moving with a fixed path of 3 millimeter. Now, now this hair is cut. Now, now it is uh, as soon as the one hair is moving through this, it is uh, cutting and see less than that length this hairs are not been counted. So, any hair more than 3 millimeter length of this surface will be counted. Okay. So, this, uh, this is the counter which actually count the number of hairs which is actually which gives the indication of the hairs. This is the fixed path and we get uh, the count. The instrument has two sets of yard guides. So, lower set lower guide gives a fixed length and the upper guide gives the uh, variable uh, set of length that uh, we can measure and total number of hairs in a fixed length uh, we can uh, uh, we can measure the number of we can count okay and uh, and if we know the speed of the yarn then we can we can convert it to the number of hairs per unit length okay. now next is the zweigel hairiness tester so the main drawback of uh, the surly hairiness tester was that it can measure, it can give the hairiness for a particular length at a time. Okay. We cannot get the um, uh, more than uh, one uh, length at a time. So, Zweigel uh, hairiness tester, it gives the value for in, a, in a single test, in a, for a single yarn, we can get hairiness for at different hair length that it gives. So, it is um, uh, from 1 millimeter to 25 millimeter length, it gives it is a it directly gives the idea about the prickle sensation. Uh, the apparatus counts the number of hairs at a distance from 1 to 25 millimeter from the yarn edge. Okay. Suppose, it gives a uh, hairiness 2 to 3 millimeter or around that uh, large number of hairs. That means, we have we will have an indication that it will give this yarn if we use for to make fabric it will give prickle sensation. On the other hand if it does not give say up to say 10 millimeter here it is almost very less number and above that more than that that means it will not give us prickle sensation we can that will be may be used for other application or may they that may create other uh, type of problem, but at least uh, prickle sensation we can get clear idea from this uh, instrument. And the measuring principle is exactly same as uh, Shardley uh, instrument, here again the uh, light source will be actually momentarily cut and it will be measured. And here the typically the set the distance is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 15. 18, 21 and 25 millimeter from yarn surface. So, we will get wide range of uh, data instead of uh, in place of single data in Sarli hairiness tester. Now, this is the instrument here uh, these are the different actually 
optical sensors at a fixed different fixed length and these are the number of hairs counted. Okay. Now, as the hair moves depending on the length of the hair we can uh, we will get the number of hairs. Now, let us see now here is this is the movie. Now, depending on the number of hairs at a certain distance it gives the, um, but ultimately we will get uh, uh, all this data. Okay. So, this way this is actually cumulative uh, value ultimately it, it gives the cumulative value of this. So, we will get uh, this type of. Group. So, what does it show? If we say if we this is the data if we get this data that means, the uh, more than 18 millimeter is a 5. So, more than 15 millimeter it is a uh, 7. So, say 15 to 18 millimeter there are say 2 hairs. So, accordingly we can get. Okay. So, if we, uh, if we want to get the number of hairs and, and ultimately we will get uh, we can calculate the how many hairs will be there in yarn surface. We can calculate the how many hairs will be there in uh, fabric surface per unit area and we can get the uh, prickliness sensation. Typically, hairs uh, less than 3 millimeter, three, around 3 millimeter or less than that it uh, creates problem and with a stiff fabric fiber and fiber diameters are higher fiber diameter. Okay. So, the yarn is illuminated from the opposite side of the photocell as the yarn runs past the measuring station on the hairs cut the light off momentarily from the photocell. Okay. It cuts and uh, the instrument measure the total number of hairs in each category and it has got a fixed speed of 50 meters per minute. So, accordingly we can cal calculate the count of here. So, uh, there are uh, different uh, photocells we can adjust the photocells based on the yarn surface. Okay. Next is the hairiness tester by Wooster, which is actually uh, additional attachment of Wooster evenness tester. That uh, during evenness testing we can actually attach this uh, tester the attachment uh, for yarn hairiness. Here the measurement technique is entirely different. Here we do not measure the length of hair, length of hair present. Here we measure the total length of hair. It is here we measure the um, in earlier um, Zweigel and uh, Sarli tester we measure the number of hairs present above certain specified length, but uh, here uh, in Wooster tester we measure the total length of hair. So, how do we measure? We, we cannot measure the length of hair directly here we try to measure the hair length indirectly and indirectly we measure by light scattering principle okay. and the optical att attachment is there in Wooster evenness tester and where infrared light is illuminated on the yarn surface when it is moving through and uh, the infrared light the which is actually moving directly the direct light with a specified actually it, uh, it, it comes uh, from an aperture certain aperture diameter will be there. So, that uh, light will be blocked that particular light will not reach to the receptor. Okay. Uh, that means, that the if uh, the, there is no yarn light is there the aperture will block the light. So, that will not reach the up to the sensor. So, it will sense there is no light. Even it will actually scatter, it will receive the light which has been scattered by the hairs protruding fibers. That the intensity of that light will be captured and it will give indirect sensation, indirect measurement of total length of hairs. Suppose uh, uh, one yarn it is moving on filament yarn if we move. So, as there is no hairiness, so it will not scatter the light. Okay. That it will uh, 
that light will not uh, reach up to the sensor. So, it will only receive the signal from the, uh, uh, the to those light which have been actually scattered by the protruding fibers. And uh, so, this is the setup. Okay. So, here it is a IR transmitter okay, and uh, the light which is actually it is uh, projected here, it has actually been converted to the parallel beam of light. Okay. Suppose there is no yarn, so this is the uh, light actually the direct light and here it is a light stop arrangement, this is the uh, direct light okay. and there is a, a light uh, stop arrangement, this light will be stopped here, okay. it will not um, reach up to the uh, receiver. And so, we will stop here today, we will continue with this in the next class. Okay. Thank you.